Good everyone and welcome to today's Living Life uh, and welcome to uh, the last of my four part mini Living Life series uh, that began with, um, what is it, Isaiah chapter 6. And uh, in review, uh, so starting from cha chapter 6, the themes that we looked at over my four, um, four parts were chapter 6, recognition, recognizing um, our place uh, before God, our, who we are as sinful and unholy before the holy and righteous God. And the second was chapter 7, verse 1 to 9, to trust, trust in God. Uh, part 3, chapter 7, verse 10 to 25, was obedience, learning to obey God in our lives. And today's uh, chapter 8, verses 1 to 8, is the consequence. Now, it doesn't fit exactly because it's not really meant to be a series or anything, but uh, the there is a consequence if we do not learn uh, the three main points. And the three main points uh, are the, you know, one, two, three, uh, the recognition, trust, and obedience, which brings us back um, full circle to what I mentioned a few days ago, that God can and will chop us down into a tree stump uh, to help us learn our place, to learn trust, and to learn obedience. Because sometimes we only learn when we are hurting. Uh, when we, um, you know, things have to get worse before it can get better. So um, anything or anyone that we trust above God, we see today, will disappoint us. So let's read the passage and then we'll continue. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. The Lord said to me, Take a large scroll and write on it with an ordinary pen, Maher Shalah Hashbas. And I will call in Urah the priest and Zechariah son of Jeberechiah as reliable witnesses for me. Then I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. And the Lord said to me, Name him Maher Shalah Hashbas. Before the boy knows how to say, My father or my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the plunder of Samaria will be carried off by the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke to me again. Because this people has rejected the gently flowing waters of Shaloah and rejoices over Rezen and the son of Ramaliah, therefore the Lord is about to bring against them the mighty floodwaters of the river, the king of Assyria with all his pomp. It will overflow all its channels, run over all its banks, and sweep on into Judah, swirling over it, passing through it, and reaching up to the neck. Its outspread rings will cover the breadth of your land, O Emmanuel. Now, I read somewhere uh, that Christianity, that, you know, ours, is the only religion in the world that claims resurrection as the core of its belief. Resurrection, and we're obviously talking about Jesus Christ. The other, you know, other religions have something, you know, that kind of like similar. Uh, we have like, um, you know, like the wheel and, and so forth, but nothing straight up resurrection of, you know, someone who dies but is resurrected back to life. Uh, and it's not just Jesus, you know, he performed such miracles uh, before he went to heaven as well. So we can see that, uh, and you know, it helps us to realize that true power resides only with God, only with our God. And the script, scripture is living proof of his power and his authority over nature, over creation itself. All the prophecies, you know, from the Old Testament are living proof of God. And Isaiah, in the beginning of today's passage, is told to write down the child's name even before he is conceived uh, as an evidence of this kind of predictive prophecy. Now, I think someone did make a count, but you know, I cannot remember and I couldn't find the, numbers, the number of prophecies that are in the Bible. It is like a lot. And all of them come true, has come true. And the ultimate prophecies point us to Jesus. And the book of Isaiah is one of the biggest ones. They have the most dramatic uh, prophecies that tell us about Jesus. Um, you know, and as I talked about yesterday, God sent Jesus to be with us, to show us how to obey God, to show us that we can obey God, because Jesus is all we need. And that is why God has sent him, because Jesus is God with us. That is his name. That is, you know, who Jesus is, 
God with us. He is Emmanuel. Now, but as um, Ahaz exemplifies, we like to trust in a lot of other things and other people than God, than Jesus. Trust, um, trust in, trusting in people will disappoint us, but not with Jesus. People will betray us, but not Jesus. Ahaz decides to put his trust in the king of Assyria. Now, um, but Isaiah prophesies that one uh, that the one Ahaz trusts and puts above God will one day be the source of his ruin. Now, the passage talks about two rivers, right? We have the stream of Shiloh versus the river. Now, uh, the river is actually talking about the, the river Euphrates, and it's talking about Assyria, right? That river will overflow to flood over Judah. Right, that image, um, the one, uh, you know, one Shiloh that, that's in Judah, this is only a stream. It's a gentle stream. And so um, the prophecy is that, you know, you are preferring the river. And it sounds more impressive, doesn't it? Right? It doesn't even need a name. It is, the title is enough, the river, because it, it is actually referred to as the river Euphrates. Um, you will trust that foreign power over the very, you know, stream and the place of, of you know, honey and, and just all the source of blessing that God has given you, right? Uh, in chapter um, 7, verse 20, um, it says that um, in that day, the Lord would use a razor um, hired from beyond the river, against that river, the river Euphrates, the king of Assyria, to shave your head and the hair of your legs and to take off your beard also. So he's talking about how you, the one you trust, uh, the, the King Ahaz trust, puts his trust in the king of Assyria, he will actually come and be the source of your shame, right? They're talking about the shaving the legs and the beard, is talking about shame, right? For a man in that day to not have a beard, to lose his beard, to have it cut off, is to be put to shame, to be in total embarrassment. If we trust in people over God, we will be shamed. We will be put to shame. But Jesus came knowing that we are rebellious, knowing that we are stubborn, knowing that we are prone to adultery, knowing all of that. He still came to die for us so that we can be right with God, to have a right and, uh, and, right and proper uh, true relationship with God despite our sinfulness. Yeah, to help us recognize God and to know God. Jesus allowed himself to be shamed for our, for our sake, right? for, for, us, uh, for, us to be, uh, for him to be put to shame. Jesus, uh, in that way, leads us to faith. Right? When we cannot believe, when we cannot trust, uh, nor even you know, have faith, it is Jesus who helps us and leads us to faith. Which is interesting because most people think the other, the other way. They think that we need to have faith to believe in Jesus. But the one that we need first is Jesus. It begins and it ends with Jesus. Jesus is the one that we need, right? The presence of Jesus uh, is what leads us to faith. So I pray that today you would just call upon his name, you would pray, you would be with him, seek him so that your, so that your faith will grow. Our application for today is to pray. Because remember, to pray is to converse with God. It is about relationship. And trust, faith grows out of relationship. Our religion is not like other religions because it's not a religion, right? It is a relationship. And prayer, conversation, um, is the, what do you call it, the core or the root of all relationships. I pray that you will pray so that you will recognize, so that you will trust and obey God through Jesus Christ, recognizing Jesus uh, and all that he has come to do, to lead you to God. Let's pray. God, we thank you, Lord, and we want to um, pray uh, over our hearts today. Um, may we always depend and recognize and trust in your son, Jesus, whom you have sent uh, to lead us and to show us the way. 
for those of us who are lacking faith, who desire faith. I pray for more of Christ. I pray that they will just open up their mouths and call upon the name of Jesus. And I, because I know when they do that, when we do that, faith will come as we trust in your Son, Jesus Christ. So I pray, we thank you for your word once again that brings us life and hope and salvation. And all these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience.